Oh, I can't believe somebody finally did it. I've been asking for wood for years on the PC case because, I mean, it looks absolutely gorgeous and it's a good idea that we don't do case awards earlier on because this thing is definitely going to be in best cases of 2022, baby. This is the Fractal Design North, trying to encompass everything the Scandinavian brand is all about, design, beautiful functionality, and a good quality price as well. Everything pretty much on this case tops out in terms of I might use this as my daily now, but there is one small caveat that we have to talk about, but that's later. So my first question to Fractal Design was, how is this wood treated? So we have the walnut on the black model and the lighter oak on the white model. It looks absolutely beautiful. The thing is, you have to know how the wood is treated, how it's properly prepared so there it doesn't expand or crack in temperature fluctuations over time during shipment, etc. Uh, and we'll get to those answers later, just because I am recording this before I get the answers. Oh, whoops. And my second question was, how are they so competitive on the price point. So right away, this is a $129 enclosure for both black and the white model, TG or the mesh. We'll talk about the TG and mesh differences later, but still $129 for something that looks this beautiful and also has a ton of functionality on the interior. So this isn't just the looks, this is pretty much the whole package. All right, enough uh, sucking up. <laughs> Let's talk actual external features. First of all, the wood is beautifully treated. It is nice to the touch. There is no curvature, it's perfectly straight and we have that beautiful randomized texture throughout the wood columns. I really like the slight uh, design differences between the black and the white. So aside from the walnut wood on the black model, so slightly darker, still has plenty of texture, very nice and smooth, we have brass uh, elements throughout. So on the case feed, the front IO, and that's pretty much it in terms of like those color accents that really complement this whole aesthetic. While on the white model, the accents are silver, beautiful contrast between the entire body and the IO. Notice something interesting, finally, separate audio jacks. Also very interesting is the inclusion of these fake leather straps for the top panel. They are toolless, so they just kind of pull back and it helps you to, you know, remove them easier. But see, beautiful attention to detail, slightly lighter oak style and slightly darker walnut style for each of these models. This front panel is easily removable like this. There's a fine dust filter behind it and we have access to our fans. The two included fans are powerful 140, 1700 RPM fans. This is plenty airflow uh, out of the box. You can of course swap them out for three 120s if you go in here and their respective radiators. I'll show you the power supply shroud in just a second. But this is probably the weakest point in its structure just because in order to remove these fans, you need to access all the screws from the interior just because this whole front fan bracket is not removable. And man, I really wish, you know, Fractal would jump on that train. You've never played like this before, mate. <laughs> Introducing the Extrify M8 with its visionary concept of an ultra low front section of only four millimeter button height, improving control and accuracy for those unforgettable mate moments. The mouse is wireless with a discrete USB-C port on the right to make room for that ultra low front, has the Pixar 3395 highest performing sensor and incredibly only 55 grams with a solid shell. Tripophobia no more, and you get to choose your favorite colorway. Check it out below. I love the curvature of the top panel, it's toolless. There is no dust filter because the density of this metal mesh acts as one, but it's not as, you know, it's not as high porosity like Fantex or Lian Lee, but it should do the job for exhaust. Here we have 120 and 140 mil fan mounts up to 280 radiator that can be installed at the top. And I love the defect the that they're labeled. Now the mesh models. This is very interesting because we're getting back to the days of needing additional GPU cooling and this thing makes it possible. It is the same porosity as the top, so not very good, you know, don't get your hopes up, but it's still something. We pull this back, take it off. And first I saw this, I was like, oh my God, they forgot to uh, give me fan mounts, but there is an actual bracket for it. And the TG panel is backwards compatible with the case for the mesh. So in case you ever get the option to buy this separately, you know that you can. By the way, the TG on the white model looks awesome. If you don't care about side cooling, this is the way to go. And that side ventilation consists of this bracket. It can support dual 120s or 140 mil fans. Uh, it has three positions, so the top, the middle, and the bottom. And uh, very easy to install, two screws at the back and just slides into this uh, panel here for additional support. This is really good because 
Uh, not only can you maybe potentially use a downdraft cooler in here and have all that additional support for intake, but for BP GPUs, for example, I would probably install it at the very bottom so that I don't need additional intake for the CPU area so that we can have that front to back airflow, but additional uh, intake or exhaust for the GPU. That'd be a really fun thing to experiment with. In practice, you do have to keep in mind the CPU tower clearance. If you are installing the side bracket in the top or the middle position, just because it bumps into the CPU cooler. So right now, for example, everything fits uh, no problem. Weirdly though, I do have to lift my CPU cooler. I'm guessing it's been sagging for a while in order to have this whole thing just attached properly. In this configuration, the fan is spinning no problem. Also, the side bracket acts as a guard for, for your cables, for example, and uh, the side panel closes just fine. But the thing is, we know from Lee and Lee and Fantex that designing a proper porosity uh, mesh requires work. This is definitely not their final design. It's very restrictive, but I'm very happy that at least Fractal is going into that direction because this will only expand and will, will get much, uh, better performing cases later. Also under the hood on the white model, you can see the structure is actually gray. It's not pure black, uh, like on the black model, creating a beautiful contrast for your components and between all the exterior panels too. All right, so to access the front power supply shroud, we have to first remove the side panel that houses our side ventilation bracket. It just pulls back and out, nice and easy. Here you can mount up to a 60 millimeter uh, thickness for a radiator for 120s and up to 35 millimeter thickness for a 140 radiator, so just keep that in mind. And yeah, I would say that's pretty decent for a mid-tower. Even though the mesh and TG are the same price, the mesh one gets the fan hub, the TG version does not. So this can support four fans and there's a PWM fan header that goes directly into your motherboard. So this fan hub is not powered with the power supply. No SATA, no Molex, this goes directly into your motherboard. Also really interesting is that you can relocate this fan hub all the way to the back here, which means that uh, if you are mounting any fans on the side, it'll be easier to plug them into something that is right here in this main chamber instead of routing them all the way to the back. And this way you still can mount a 120 mil fan underneath without you know, totally destroying the usefulness of this thing just by relocating the fan hub. Now Fractal Design is definitely thinking outside the box because here for the bottom four PCI slots, you can mount an 80 millimeter fan, allowing you to remove any of that heat generated and circulating here. And that is an awesome way to just add additional cooling for your graphics card. Just keep in mind that if your graphics card is anything wider than two slots, the 80 millimeter fan simply will not fit. So these four PCI slots at the bottom have to be completely clear for the fan to go there. No surprises at the back whatsoever. So nice little channel for all your cable management with Velcro ties, quality rubber grommets that don't stick out. As soon as you plug in the cable, we have dual SSDs on the single bracket, very uh, staple fractal design, and also dual three and a half inch drive brackets at the bottom here, right in front of the power supply and with these angled thumb screws, so they're easily uh, removable. And also you can reposition the bottom one to the top of the power supply shroud like this, in case you have a longer power supply with all the cables exiting here without compromising on the actual utilization of this hard drive bracket. It's nice. All right, so after everything has been assembled, the experience is exactly what you should expect for 2022. Easy component fitting, easy cable management, but two things to keep in mind with this side bracket is that I would say it plants itself perfectly for a vertical GPU mount, although this case does not support it natively as part of the frame. You might get one of those brackets that give you vertical support and that way you can have that direct uh, airflow delivery for a vertical mounted GPU, so something to maybe explore. And the second thing is that if you are going with something beefier on the CPU heatsink side, you have up to 170 millimeters in terms of height for the CPU tower with these uh, with this bracket in the lowest position. But I doubt, um, you know, like the beefier, wider heat sinks like the Noctua NHD15 would fit in here just because of how tall this bracket is. And it's actually bu uh, bumping into my really regularly sized cooler over there already. So that's kind of a concern. Some really interesting information about the wood now. The yields are 98%, so that's a really good number for, I would say, sustainability point of view, so not much gets wasted. Uh, and the way this wood gets treated is that it first gets selected, then dried, then there's four layers of polyurethane. It's kind of this like clear coat that seals in the wood, so nothing would happen with it, and basically kind of turns the exterior into 
I would say like more of a plastic material. So over time, I shouldn't expect any like warping or any discoloration or any kind of like imperfections appearing in the wood over time. And that's a really good thing. So really hoping this would last for a while. Now, when it comes to cooling, this is where North both met my expectations, but also I was left a little dissatisfied because of all the additional side cooling, the additional 80 millimeter GPU fan in there. And so when we look at the CPU temperatures, by default, out of the box, it's awesome on the CPU side. You know, adding the exhaust fan for the rear might help the most in terms of trying to remove additional heat generated by the GPU and of course, helping the CPU uh, tower cooler as well. But I feel like I was expecting slightly more. The thing is, those front 140 mil fans move a lot of air. That front panel is non-restrictive at all. And yeah, two fans and you get awesome cooling, uh, slightly better than average for sure. On the GPU side, however, at stock, it's right in the middle of the pack, so nothing terrible. But again, adding the 80 millimeter fan, for some reason, actually increased my temperature on the GPU by two degrees. I'm thinking it's because it's trying to remove the cooler air that's already trying to go into the GPU. So it's fighting that graphics card and adding the side intake as well didn't do much. It helped the CPU, but not much for the GPU. So again, uh, maybe for a different class of graphics card, it might do the job, but perhaps if you're looking at something 25 to 40% bigger in volume for an enclosure, uh, then the side ventilation and additional exhaust from the rear would definitely help. But on this size, not so much. So I feel like the takeaway with the North is that it's an absolutely gorgeous mid tower because of the wood, you know, the oak on the white model and the walnut on the black uh, that looks super unique very furniture friendly, very modern friendly, and without compromising on the interior storage capacity, uh, cable management, cooling, and hardware support. The only thing is that it is kind of disappointing that the top uh, cannot support a 280 millimeter radiator, which is strange for a fractal design mid tower. Normally they're like all out in terms of water cooling potential and support, but I'm guessing not here. You can only do a 240 at the top uh, and otherwise, at 129, you know, when it comes to just pure performance, you know, there's slightly better cases out there. Even the, the Torrent series, I would say, like, absolutely uh, is the chart topper. But I just love how this thing looks and how, how it feels to work in. And I really want the Fractal Design to succeed with this design of expanding the idea and concept of that side ventilator mesh to become actually feasible because, you know, here it's, uh, it's a little bit restrictive. And when I did the temperature tests with the side panel as a TG versus mesh, there was one degree difference, right? Uh, so not that significant. And I really want them to expand the metal mesh, the porosity to become better so that the side panel mesh can actually do something. All right, guys, let me know what you think of the Fractal Design North. I'm Dimitri. I'll talk to you in the next video. And as always, cool responsibly.